Hello, everyone around the world, and welcome to Paper Cuts, coming to you live on YouTube and LinkedIn. Paper Cuts is a monthly show dedicated to helping you learn more about document automation using Adobe Document Services, our API platform. This is a live show, so if you have any questions, feel free to drop them into the comments, and we have our team of experts here to answer any of your questions, whether that's you know development questions as you're working on some projects, whether it is uh, you are new to this, so you want to uh, learn some more, drop your questions in, we're happy to answer. If you're not familiar with Adobe Document Services, um, it is a set of services that and APIs that allow you to do a variety of things around uh, being able to generate documents, uh, merge uh, PDFs together, um, combine them together, and a variety of different services that you can utilize. So if you want to learn more about that, go on over to adobe.io, and we have a huge amount of details there that can help you learn uh, and get started there. So for our main topic today, what we're going to be covering is um, Microsoft Power Automate and how you can take advantage of using Adobe PDF tools inside of Microsoft Power Automate to automate some of those common actions like merging PDFs together um, or combining and assembling a proposal or protecting your PDFs. We're going to be diving into a number of examples today, um, so uh, really excited about that. But to get started today, I wanted to introduce our experts. So let's um, uh, bring on our experts uh, now and uh, have them introduce themselves. Let's switch over here. Joel, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, folks. Uh, my name is Joel Geraci. I work with the uh, evangelism team to talk about our various APIs, as well as embed API for displaying PDF files. Ray, how about you next? Hi, everybody. I'm Ray Camden. I'm same team as uh, Joel, uh, talking about our APIs, the PDF embed API, and anything cat related on your person. And Alicia. Yeah, and that API and anything. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hopefully, you can see me and hear me. Yeah, My name is Alicia and Dvorak, and I am a product marketing manager here at Adobe. All right, great. So, what we're going to do is, um, again, as as we're going on, feel free to ask your questions. We're happy to answer them. So, what we're going to start off with is we're going to start off with some news. And um, I'm going to pass it over to Alicia, who has some news around uh, Adobe Summit. So uh, Alicia, why don't you take it away? Or actually, let's hold off there. And we're going to switch it over to Joel. Why don't you uh, talk a little bit about, uh, or no, sorry, Ray. Why don't you talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that are going on with Document Generation API? Absolutely, yes. Uh, so first off, uh, if you don't know what the Document Generation API is, our very last episode on Paper Cuts uh, was all about that particular API. And I showed some demos, and we definitely have multiple articles on our blog talking about it as well. Uh, the news I have is that coming soon to Power Automate will be the Document Generation API. Uh, and if you've never seen Power Automate, you're in luck. This whole episode is about it. Uh, and again, that feature will be added there, and we'll have some templates to make it even easier to use. That's it for me. Awesome, very, very cool. Um, okay, uh, so um, one other uh, news item that we have is actually uh, centered around um, Adobe Summit. So one of the things that we have uh, that we actually presented on there is we did a variety of different uh, sessions at Adobe Summit. And if you didn't join live while we we're doing that uh, there a couple weeks ago, go check it out. There's a huge amount of different sessions up on there that are wonderful to learn, whether it's about your digital marketing um, uh, automation, so forth. But as it relates to document automation, what we did was we did a variety of different sessions that touch on a number of things within document services. So one of the things was around 
how you can take your PDFs and um, no longer make them an analytics black box. Uh, and that is using the PDF embed API to embed that onto your websites and integrate it into with uh, things like Adobe Analytics or your other analytics software to be able to uh, create really integrated experiences with your documents. Uh, if you wanted to dive more into that, we actually had a lab there that you can also go and check out, which is uh, diving actually deep into the code into that and how you can get started using the PDF embed API and in integrating that in there. So all of these are free sessions that are on the website uh, that you can go uh, check out there. Um, the other uh, one is, um, and this kind of helps complement some of the things that we're doing today, if you are interested in diving into some of the things around Adobe Sign and PDF tools with uh, uh, with Power Automate, there's actually a great session on there that uh, that uh, Steve and I did uh, around how you can uh, automate a number of different uh, scenarios there. And then if you're interested in also getting into embedding electronic signature experiences into your websites, there is a session uh, by Travis about using e-signatures um, and using Adobe Sign and embedding those experiences onto a website. So all of those are great sessions to go check out. They're entirely free uh, and, um, and those are great there. So now I'm gonna pass it over to Joel uh, and uh, I think you had uh, an update on some of the stuff with the search API. Uh, I do. Um, so our embed API continues to be improved uh, iteration over iteration. And one of the most uh, recent improvements was uh, the ability to replace our search engine, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the search functionality with your own search functionality. So you can call the search API directly from inside uh, the embed API and then control the experience of moving from uh, the first hit to the next hit to you know cycle around uh, through all the hits. But we've also added the ability to uh, display linearized PDF, which if you see the PDF file in Acrobat, if it's set up for fast web view, uh, those PDF files will be able to display almost like they're streaming. So the first the first page will display first and then the subsequent pages will flow in there. Uh, so you get a much, much better experience with a linearized PDF than with a, a regular vanilla PDF. And now the Embed API supports that as well. So back to you, Ben. Awesome, thanks a lot. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, switch over to our main topic, which is integrating in with uh, Microsoft Power Automate. Um, now, Microsoft Power Automate has, um, is uh, a low code uh, solution that allows you to be able to easily take your different um, uh, take your different processes within Microsoft 365 and be able to, without having to write code, be able to drop in different components into a workflow. And it ties into over 200 different connectors from things like Microsoft SharePoint, um, the Microsoft Dataverse, uh, Dynamics, Teams, as well as a number of Adobe solutions, such as um, you, you have things like uh, Ad Adobe Sign, um, Adobe uh, PDF Tools, and Adobe Creative Cloud. So if you actually go into um, your uh, Microsoft Power Automate account and you go over to Connectors, what you will see if you go in and search for Adobe here, is that we have our three different connectors in here, Adobe PDF Tools, uh, Creative Cloud, and Adobe Sign. And if you go into any one of these, you will see if you want to get started with this, there is a number of different connectors that are available for you to start. So here we can see that there's one that says uh, convert newly added files to text searchable PDFs or OCR in SharePoint. So when you drop a file into that folder, it will OCR that document automatically. That's an example. So if I, for example, if I then go into here, um, what it'll ask you to do is it'll ask you to authenticate to Adobe PDF tools and to SharePoint. Now, if you haven't authenticated to Adobe PDF tools, um, then you can create a new connection. And when you do that, it's going to ask you to put in all your connection information. If you don't already have a, a Adobe PDF tools account or a trial, um, you can actually go to 
uh, the site to uh, set up your actual um, uh, to set up your actual uh, credentials, and it will uh, set that up specifically for uh, for you to be able to copy and paste those values directly into Power Automate here to very get very simple for you to get started. Um, so that's a great tip. And if you are currently using Adobe PDF tools, then you can just copy and paste your values uh, into there. And for the, ba uh, the base 64 encoded private key, just copy your whole private key, paste that into there, and that should uh, you should be good to go there. So um, I already have some credentials set up in here. So when you incorporate this into here, um, in any of your different flows inside of Power Automate, and you go into your actions, and we search for Adobe, we'll then see that we have all the actions in here from being able to uh, compress a PDF, convert uh, a, like a Word or Excel or PowerPoint or image into a PDF, take HTML, convert that into a PDF, or go the other direction. Maybe you want to take a PDF and convert it back into a Word, Excel, or PowerPoint document. These are all actions that are available in here. There's also things like the, the merge PDF to combine things together, which we'll see in a little bit, or protect, which we'll also see to be able to um, add things like password protection uh, on there. So these are all different um, actions that are available in here, and we're continuing to always expand those actions out. What Ray mentioned there with Adobe Document Generation API, we're incorporating that into our PDF tools there. So you'll also be able to dynamically generate things like your Word documents in there as well. So lots of different uh, uh, things that you can use there. Now, if you uh, want to see any of the uh, examples that we're working on today, and uh, play with them, there is actually a repository uh, where you can, um, on GitHub, where you can actually access all of the different files uh, for you to be able to uh, use and uh, play around with uh, on your own. So uh, feel free to head on over there and download those if you want to, uh, uh, if you found some of the examples that we're about to go through interesting, check them out there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to pass it over to Ray and Ray's going to go through our first example. All right, thank you, Ben. Let me share my screen one second. All right, so uh, let me start off by saying that I'm extremely new to Power Automate. Uh, so what you see that I've built, if I've done anything weird or just not the standard way, uh, all I know is that it works uh, and uh, I'm new to it. So that's my excuse. Uh, I can say being new to Power Automate, uh, it was really exciting to, to see, you know, how easy it was to build a flow, uh, you know, how uh, simple it was to check the status, to see errors. Uh, not that I ever make errors, of course, uh, but just, you know, the whole process, you know, I, I'm new to this. I like it. I think it's really darn neat. So what I want to do is describe what I built. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, an example of it working, and then I'll tell you, uh, you know, what I had to do to actually make this thing do. So my particular demo uh, is taking the idea of I have an email address that I have set up that is going to be getting a lot of PDFs. And what I want to do is a couple different things. You know, first, I want to add OCR to any PDF sent to that email address. So if you've ever seen a PDF that's just a collection of pictures, you know you can't do things like select text or search for text. And that is not optimal. Well, luckily, I mean, we have an API that just bam, OCRs it and makes it so that you can do that. I also want to uh, um, uh, make the final PDF more compressed, a bit smaller, uh, just optimize the file in general. And then the last thing I want to do is save it to a place where I can get that PDF later on when I have time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a sample PDF. I'm going to show you two of them. Uh, first one, not so serious. Second one, a bit more serious. So I have a PDF about an upcoming Captain Kirk fight. And it is essentially one big image. 
and definitely not something that I could actually work in terms of text. I'm going to take this PDF and I'm going to email it to my special address. And I'm doing that on the side of my screen here. And I have just sent that email. So what's happening now is that the flow that I have built is going to start processing that. And then when it's done, it's going to drop the final result uh, in my PDF attachments folder here in a OneDrive. So it's typically 20, 30 seconds or so. Uh, so it should be done if I just keep rambling. And because I said it'd be done rather quick, it won't be. But you know what I'll do? Uh, I'll show you because this was new to me. When you look at uh, your Power Automate flow, you can actually see the process uh, as it's doing stuff. Again, this is something that I had to learn uh, being new. I can click here and see that, oh, it succeeded. Come back to my OneDrive, and there it is. We'll open that up. And we could see that the PDF now has been OCR. And if I actually go in here and search for like arcade, I can see it's actually working. Now, that is not necessarily the best demo out there. I have another PDF that's a bit more business like. Uh, it's a multiple page document about our very exciting vendor security review program. Also, a bunch of images, not actual text. And this really needs the OCR. And this particular PDF is actually about 3.5 meg, so it's kind of big as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this PDF. I'm going to mail it to the email address I set up and send it. And once again, my flow is going to start working and process that PDF. So if I refresh, we should see it working any moment now. Clickety, clickety. You know, it's very true that the more you click, the faster things work. And because I said that, it's going slow. Come on now. There we go. All right. So we will let this process for a few seconds. Let me actually show you uh, how I built this workflow because you know, outside of me you know, learning a bit about uh, how uh, Power Automate works, the actual uh, code behind this or, or the, the stuff that I had to do was maybe five minutes of work. So I began by setting up you know, what triggers this particular flow, and that is when an email arrives. I will point out, definitely open up that advanced options because uh, you want to tell it to include attachments when it processes that new mail. And even better, you can say, hey, I only care about mails uh, that have attachments. So I set that up as my trigger, and then I began to add my logic. First thing I said is that I want you to apply this to each attachment. Uh, a email could have multiple PDFs assigned, and this is how you would handle saying, you know, run this for every attachment there. Inside of there, I added the Adobe Document Services uh, Power Automate built-in logic to create uh, a searchable via OCR PDF version of that attachment. And all I had to do was just add this and point it to uh, the attachment's value. So I have an attachment name and I have the attachment contents. Then to compress the PDF, I literally just added the next action. And in there, oh, let me expand that. I use the output from the previous step. The last thing I do is use one more action to copy it to OneDrive using the output from the uh, last result. So all of this, not one line of code at all, about four or five steps total. And in theory, that should be done. There it is. I mentioned that PDF was about 3.5 megs or so. So it has compressed quite a bit and it is absolutely uh, searchable now. So if I want to look for something, again, in the terribly exciting vendor security review, I will search for vendor. And we should see that now it has been OCR. Again, a pretty simple example, but being that I am extremely new to Power Automate, I was able to build this rather quickly and have a pretty cool uh, functionality. That's it for me, Ben. All right, thanks. And uh, actually, Ryan had a great tip that I'm going to put up here, which is you can actually step into the execution of the run uh, uh, from the run history. Um, hashtag Power Automate tip. So thank you, Ryan, on that uh, on that front. Um,
so uh, uh, actually, I had a question for you, Ray, um, yes. and I'm going to pick on you being the newbie to some of the stuff with Power Automate. Sure. Um, how? What were some of the things that were the gotchas that you learned uh, that uh, that for someone else joining this might be uh, some good uh, things to maybe take away? Certainly. So uh, I was kind of focused on on this editing interface you see here. Uh, I wasn't aware of where you see past executions, and that's kind of back at the flow homepage, I guess, or the metadata screen that you're seeing on here. And you know, once I saw this, it was pretty easy, and I would just click, you know, uh, to to reload uh, while I was testing. Uh, the other part that was a bit weird for me was just flow control. Uh, so, for example, the uh, way that we worked with the array of data was a bit hard. Joel was a big, big help for me on that. Uh, and just kind of learning those particular mannerisms with Power Automate. Uh, now that I know it, it makes total sense. So uh, again, I built this, I think, yesterday in maybe two or three hours or so being a brand new user. And I feel it's awesome. So. Um, yeah, it, it was really cool. And what I like about your flow there too is that um, it actually applies really well to uh, scenarios where a lot of people might use things like uh, scanners in their office when people are in the office that uh, <laughs> might not do always a great job of actually OCRing and things like that, but it'll email to email addresses. So um, there are a lot of scenarios where people use email addresses to uh, be kind of an well, literally an inbox that uh, then is uh, taking action on those things. Um, I've also seen examples where uh, an email coming in is then something that needs to go through and approve and do routing and stuff. Or it could be something where like you take an invoice, invoice comes in, you have no idea where it came from, but you want to normalize that. And then uh, maybe you want to be able to mark that up and being able to mark that up with something that is OCR is much easier to use things like the highlight tools and stuff uh, mm -hmm. instead of having to uh, work around that and scribble on top of it. Um, cool, awesome. Well, thank you very much, Ray, on that one. Um, so I'm now going to uh, bring on Joel, who's going to talk a little bit, a bit about an example using um, our protect action for uh, protecting some PDFs uh, in, uh, I think it was a OneDrive or a SharePoint, Joel? Uh, it was uh, actually, ooh, it looks like a barbershop. Um, it looks like it, uh, it's in OneDrive, but I'd originally put it together in Dropbox, uh, but because of our partnership with Microsoft and for this particular um, uh, demonstration, I wanted to do everything in, in Microsoft products. So I switched over to OneDrive and that literally took all of five minutes. I mean, no, I don't even think it was five minutes because part of the five minutes was processing it the first time and letting it run. Um, like Ray, I'm also new to Power Automate, but uh, I've been using different workflow engines for, well, my hair is gray now, so a long time. Um, but uh, I was able to, to take the knowledge that I have of some of the other systems that do similar kinds of things like the, the Nintex um, workflow and uh, apply that to how Power Automate works. And I stepped right through it. It was really uh, quite easy to, Take the knowledge that I already had, apply it to the uh, to the Microsoft uh, Power Automate environment, and you know basically go ahead and get started. So, um, what I'm going to do is show. I'm going to flip to a different tab, and actually, Ben, can you push my desktop video up so I don't have to do the barbershop routine again? Is that done? Yep, you're oh, on. Yep. Okay, I'm on. Okay. So um, this is a relatively simple uh, flow. Uh, when I put a new file into a special folder inside of Dropbox, it's going to apply protection. It's going to send me an email notification and then uh, put the file into a, an output folder in Dropbox. Now, the reason you might want to create a flow like this is that uh, PDF files are uh, editable in most software now. If, if you can't just put annotations on them. You can actually completely change the PDF file entirely. Uh, and it's kind of like um, if it's a marketing material or a press release or a, 
financial services report. That's not something you really want people to be able to edit and modify. It's it's almost like being able to create PDF style deep fakes of video. Is you've all the branding's there, um, all the information's there that you want. You just have to tweak a couple of paragraphs to say something other than what the original document was supposed to say. So in my opinion. Um, every PDF file that's published out on the web that you don't want people to modify, you shouldn't count on them only using a browser or only using Adobe Reader. Uh, you want to protect that PDF file uh, from being edited, uh, potentially from being printed, but definitely from you know uh, not being modified in any way that you don't want it to be uh, modified. So I set up this flow so that when I drop the files into a specific location, they automatically get protected. Uh, using the PDF services protect API call. So let me just uh, bring up the finder here uh, and then I'll walk you through how I did this. I've got an input uh, input folder and I've got an output folder over here. I'm gonna just take uh, the one PDF file and uh, paste it uh, into my OneDrive uh, input folder and the thing should run. So while that's actually happening instead of continuously clicking uh, over on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and um, take you through uh, this, this flow. So I'm saying, all right, every time a new file gets added to the input folder, I'm assuming they're PDF, I could certainly check the MIME type. And for example, if the MIME type was one of the formats that we support, uh, like you know Microsoft Word files or Excel or something like that, I could call a different API to convert that to PDF first and then apply protection to that file. But since I'm assuming it's a PDF file, I can just drop that PDF file in there. Um, I'm going to then apply protection. I'm basically turning everything off and I'm putting a very simple password in there. I do not recommend using one, two, three, four, five as your password, but when you demo things as frequently as I do and you try to come up with unique and uh, more secure passwords, you end up uh, forgetting them during your demo and that's really not what you want to have happen but uh you know you can put whatever password you want here and everything works pretty well uh and then what i did was i said okay well when when it's complete uh send me an email notification that is my real email address so if you need to ask any questions feel free to pick up on that um but it's uh it puts a subject uh of the pdf file name it says now secure and attaches the uh, PDF file itself. Now, the reason I set up the email notification is uh, given my memory, um, it's very likely that I'll put a file in the input folder and then forget about it uh, entirely. So it's, it's, a, it's a good step for me to add. But um, for those times where I do remember uh, to check the output folder, uh, the next step is to uh, essentially just save that file to the output folder. Now, I could overwrite the original file, but I don't consider that to be best practice because oftentimes I don't want to secure the original file. I want to have an editable version around. For me, I just don't want it to be published up on the web. So what I could do in this step here, instead of saving it back to Dropbox, is I could send this up to my server and my server could notice that there's a new PDF file there and could essentially make that published on the web. Uh, so with that, I'm going to jump back to uh, my Finder window here, and you can see the output folder uh, does now have the same file. It's got the same file name, but when I open this up in Acrobat now, you can see that it's secured up here. And if I go into the document properties, select security, you can see it uses password security, and I've got the security settings uh, all set to not allow here. So um, that is just a, a little quick demonstration of the workflow. Uh, and then if you can take my screen off, I'll flip back to uh, the streaming service. All right, thanks a lot there. Um, and one of the things that I'd like about the example that you gave there of showing things on desktop with OneDrive uh, there is that um, some of these types of automations, uh, I know sometimes when I'm uh, working with like marketing teams, uh, they live in the world of the files that are on their computer. Yes, yeah, it synchronizes right. up to OneDrive or, right. or Dropbox and things like that, but you live on the files that are on your computer. Yeah. And um, one of the things that I uh, think is great on that one is that that means that Power Automate could actually be a really cool automation tool 
for being able to uh, take that and do a lot of those actions to maybe like protect that, send that out for review and things like that. And just having the trigger be something that drops, uh, that, that's a drop folder on your computer. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, and that that's the one, um, that's what I want to demonstrate is you can actually have things on your desktop be automated uh, because it's synchronizing with OneDrive in the cloud. So the trigger for that flow wasn't actually me putting the file into the right folder on my desktop. The trigger was when it synchronized with OneDrive and got added up there. Um, so it, again, you can, you can you just have these wonderful little lego blocks that you can just stick together into these chains and all of a sudden you've got a lego version of the um death star sitting behind you <laughs> well i love lego blocks um uh, one other tip also on that front is uh there's a really cool connector inside of Power Automate, which is the on-premise gateway. So if you're actually looking at it, not from like an individual user perspective, and you're looking at it from like, I want this from like on-premise applications mm -hmm. that you want to have it push into a certain folder, or you want it to then um, have like a hot folder, drop folder from like an old legacy application that then triggers that flow. The on-premise gateway is actually a good good way of doing that and doing a similar type of design to what uh, Joel showed there. Um, but it basically is a little app that runs on a on a Windows server that you can then uh, have it specified to get some of that local data and work with Power Automate there. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and by the way, the email that it sent did just come in. I don't need to bring up my email account to show you guys, but know that it it actually just did uh, did come in. So the email polling happened and and I received my email with my attachment and the correct file name. Awesome, cool. Well, thank you, Joel, on that one. So, so the next thing that we're gonna do now is we're going to um, talk about a third scenario here, which is a little bit different, a little bit more advanced. And uh, to, just to give some context, I've been working with, uh, with Power Automate since it uh, first came out. So I've been, uh, playing around with a number of different connectors. I started working with things like the Adobe Sign Connector uh, inside of Power Automate and now with some of the PDF tool stuff. So I've been uh, looking at some cool ways that you can work with those together. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through, first I'm gonna show you the, the end result. Um, and then we're going to walk through how that's actually uh, gets uh, built there. All right, so. Let's uh, switch on over here to my SharePoint site here. So on my SharePoint site, I have a I have a folder here where I have this proposal. So let's just open this up here. So let's say this is a consulting agreement, and I want to make sure that with this Word document, I have the right cover page that is personalized, and I might want to have things like some supporting uh, white papers attached to this as well. So often when I'm bundling things to maybe present to a customer, I'm trying to take stuff that has been pre-existing for my marketing team, stuff that I'm creating and kind of merging those all together. And, norm and normally I would do that with things like uh, Adobe Acrobat on my computer. But oh, with man. this, what I can do before is you, I can actually... Before you uh, jump too much further, you're... Oh, never mind. You fixed it. <laughs> uh, there we go. Oops. Um, I can actually go ahead and um, take this and create an action inside of SharePoint to be able to merge that all together magically. All right, so let's go in here. I'm going to select my proposal here. And um, we'll notice that inside of SharePoint, there's actually a number of connectors, if you're not familiar, inside of SharePoint available, things like the Adobe Sign uh, a connector for Microsoft SharePoint, as well as the Adobe Document Cloud one, so you can you know combine documents directly in here. Or we're actually going to use the Power Automate example here, where we're going to say uh, send proposal uh, to customer, and this is going to then prompt me to choose a cover page. Maybe I want to personalize this to a. a person's specific region. In this case, let's choose, oh, let's choose San Francisco. Um, we can choose whether we wanna add certain uh, white papers here. And we're going to say, we're gonna add to there. We'll add a password and customer name is John Echostone. 
All right, so when we click on run flow here, let's uh, have a look at what it's gonna do here. So it's going to uh, go in here and it's based on the, oh, let's, sorry, wrong one. Let's go back here. All right, so based on the file that we selected, it's going to take that and it's going to, um, it has a couple of variables uh, like where we want the final document to go and so forth. But um, we have a number of different files. So first it's looking up to figure out the right cover page that it needs to uh, choose. So if we go back into SharePoint, we'll see that I have um, in my templates folder, I have a number of different templates here uh, for like London, uh, New York, San Francisco. So if we open that up here, we'll just see that it is a cover page that we have for San Francisco. Beautiful. And if we look at some of the other ones, we'll see that like Seattle here looks um, a little bit different with the Space Needle there. Cool. So what that is doing is it's taking the, the value of what you chose when you filled out that initial initiation form, and it's then determining which uh, file it needs to uh, merge in there. So then um, what it's doing is it's taking the, getting the file contents of the selected file, so that Word document that I was using, and it's converting that Word document using our um, action to convert the Word document to a PDF. Then I had an option in there for me to uh, conditionally add uh, different white papers. So if the condition is true, it is going to go get the white paper uh, info and it's going to uh, get the file contents for that. And the same thing for the second uh, one in there. Um, and then from there, we have it taking it and merging a PDF together. Uh, and then protecting that PDF and storing that inside of Microsoft SharePoint. So if we go back into uh, SharePoint, we have a look at our, out, uh, our generated docs here. We'll see that we have our generated document. And if we open it up, it's going to uh, ask me to put in the password because it used the protect uh, API to protect it with a password. And if I open it up, we'll then see the cover page, the consulting agreement. Um, that was a Word document. So it converted that and merged those together, as well as it added uh, the also the additional white papers that we wanted to have at the end there. Beautiful. So it created an automated action then I can use inside of SharePoint without having to uh, do any uh, steps on my computer in order to do that and make sure that I'm using the right cover images, the right latest white papers and so forth. So that's a cool way to be able to uh, automate that step. But let's go in and we're going to make a modification here because one of the things that is great about PDF tools is that it allows you to seamlessly work with some of our other tools like um, Adobe Sign. So if we go in here and uh, we're going to remove the protect one here and we're going to add uh, Adobe Sign into this. So we're gonna say add an action. We're gonna say Adobe Sign. And it's going to, first we want to upload our uh, agreement and get a document ID. So upload a document. Um, we're going to take the file name and file content from our previous step there. So let's go in here and we're going to take the file name and file content. Notice that it's really easy to just take those variables uh, from the uh, from the dynamic content and drop those between the PDF tools and the Adobe Sign Actions. So then what, what this does is that this up uploads as a transient document is what we call it uh, in the Adobe Sign world, so that Adobe Sign can reference that. So then if we go in and choose Adobe Sign um, and choose uh, create an agreement, we're gonna create an agreement uh, from an uploaded document and send it for signature. 
And there are a zillion options that you can choose uh, from this. I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but first we're going to uh, just give it a name here, say proposal. Um, we're going to set a document. Uh, actually, we're going to say proposal for, we're going to give the customer name. Um, we're going to set uh, the document ID to be the document ID from the previous step there. We're going to set our recipient email address. Now we dynamically normally add this. I'm going to, I'm going to put this as something fixed so that uh, it just makes life easier for me. And we can set the recipient order. So recipient orders, things like, do I want it to go out in parallel to people or do I want to go, uh, to go out um, sequentially? So we're going to say this is going to be the first person and there's different uh, roles that you can also facilitate in here. Someone who actually needs to sign a document, approve or accept, or uh, you just want to deliver a document securely to someone or be a form filler. You have those different roles available for you. So I'm going to choose signer here. And again, you also have more options in here that we're not going to dive into as much. Things like CC, setting expiration dates, uh, merging fields into form fields for Adobe Sign, or even having like redirects in there. So once we do that, we're going to say save. Oh, file content required. Uh, which one was that for? Let's have a quick look. For create file. Uh, all right, so I because uh, I deleted the protect step beforehand, we just need to get our file content um, instead from the uh, merge PDF there. We're going to say save. So let's go back and let's run that one more time inside of SharePoint. We're going to go to our proposal. We're going to send that out. And if you're asking why there are two different authentications there, it's because I had two different connections set up there. Doesn't make a difference for me here. Um, all right, so we're going to choose a different one here. Let's choose New York this time. We're going to just choose one white paper. Um, we're going to choose uh, Mary Bureau Stone here. We're going to say Run Flow. And so again, what this is going to do is it's going to merge the things together. It's going to send it uh, then out for signature using Adobe Sign uh, for the person to receive and sign. So hopefully. If we go and have a look in here, we're going to see our run history. It has succeeded. And let me see if I can uh, pull up my email here. And here we can see that the document was uh, sent out for signature um, to uh, to the to the person there. Actually, that didn't quite uh, uh, go out. So let's uh, have a quick uh, look here. Um, did I put a typo in this proposal for Dex? Oh, hmm, not quite sure on that one. Uh, might be a delay in my in my email, but essentially what it does is it sends out your agreement out for signature using Adobe Sign so that you have merged that all together and now you have sent that out directly uh, there. Might take a, uh, take a second for it to come in there. So that's basically the flow there. And you can see that it dynamically makes it easy for you to mix and match some of our different uh, actions and uh, APIs that are available in there. So you can easily use those uh, without having to write any code. It's just configuration. And you can even mix and match it with other services. Again, Power Automate has over 200 different connectors in it, which makes it easy for you to be able to tie uh, these services into some of those different actions there. 
All right, so with that, um, that's all I had to show on the demo uh, there. Uh, but um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to invite Joel and Ray to come back on. And um, so there were a couple of uh, um, questions that I thought I might uh, ask uh, some of you. And uh, some of them are around like, uh, being relatively new to Power Automate. Um, actually, I didn't ask that question to you, Joel. If there's uh, something that, for someone who is new to Power Automate and using uh, PDF tools, what are some of the takeaways that you might give as tips on that? Uh, so the, the, well, the best tip I can give you is if something doesn't seem obvious to you how to do something, just Google it. Um, that's how we work through dealing with uh, the attachments in Ray's example, the attachments to an email. Um, nearly everything you can think of doing in Power Automate, if you're new, someone else has already thought of. The likelihood is that if you don't, if there's not already a flow that does exactly what you want it to do with a couple of minor modifications, um, there's something that's 90% there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's already there. But then once you've got those basics, it's very easy to expand on those. Um, the conditionals are extremely simple. Uh, and and honestly, what I was able to put together just for the protect in roughly five minutes would have would have taken me a little bit longer if I had to code it up, but it also wouldn't have been as flexible. Um, so uh, this is a, an extremely powerful tool the word power in the name is is very appropriate uh but ben actually i had a a question for you uh it's yes. it's a rhetorical question for me um but uh in your example with the uh with the sending the proposal for for signature um i know when i've used adobe sign online uh, i've had to place the signature fields uh where i want the person to sign uh how do you do that in the automated way uh, in the way that you've constructed that document so that it can be populated by document generation, but also have the signature fields in place? So that's a great question. So essentially um, what I did was I used uh, what's called text tags, which uh, place um, fields uh, into your document so that you can um, easily, uh, it, it basically when it goes into Adobe Sign, it reads in those fields to know that's where a signature needs to go. That's where the signer's name needs to go. Um, one of the things that we did in our last episode is we actually touched on some of the things with document generation API, uh, which uh, showed uh, one of the new tools we have available, which is um, our document generation uh, add-in for Word that can also help you add these tags into your Word documents. Great. Also, what you, you got that one big curly bracket. What's that all about? What's that first one all about? Uh, so the big curly bracket. So the way that sign works is that it detects the, um, the height of your field based on the uh, size of the first character. And the width of it is based on the uh, distance between that first uh, character and the last um, curly bracket. So that's how sign works. Doesn't work that way with the document generation because we just you know magically uh, replace stuff in there. But with sign, um, because it's layering it on top of the document, it's uh, that's how that why that curly bracket is so huge at the beginning there. Yeah, thank you for that. And and also if um, if setting the size of the signature area based on the font sizes doesn't give you the kind of precision that um, I can't stop myself from putting into documents. Um, little tiny bit of OCD there. Uh, there is actually a dimensions directive in the tag that'll give you the uh, a precise size um, in case you end up needing to do it that way. But I did see a, uh, a comment and a question came in, which I've put up on the screen. Uh, can we address that at all? Yeah, so um, uh, will uh, PDF, when will PDF tools uh, leave preview status behind? That's a great question. I actually don't have the answer on that one. I'll have to ask our uh, our product team on that one. Um, and perhaps we might actually ask that while we're on the air and maybe we'll get an answer uh, before we uh, we finish up here. But that's a great question. Um, thank you for asking that, Ryan. Um, 
Uh, now we do have a number of uh, di uh, different customers that are actually starting to use that even with, within preview status. Preview status does not uh, mean that we're not uh, uh, on any aspect of our uh, uh, of our services being like beta or anything like that. Um, the services are actually used both within Power Automate and outside of Power Automate. The preview process is just kind of the nature of some of the uh, facts that we released uh, the PDF tools connector in March, I think it was. Yeah. Um, so, so it's still relatively new in Power Automate land. Um, and we actually have a new update that's going to be coming in the next com uh, uh, coming weeks. So, right. And just um, just to reiterate that the um, the the connectors in Power Automate are what are in preview. The services that they call are hmm. actually shipping. They're you know they're they're fully functional. Um, so Ray. Uh, I being also being new to Power Automate, are there any takeaways that you got from some of the things that Joel showed, some of the things that I showed that uh, you think are uh, sparking ideas? Because I know you have ideas going on in your mind. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it just you know, I learned this this week, so uh, just being exposed to it, um, it seems to get deeper and more powerful the more you dig into the different. Um, and I keep calling them actions, but the steps. Um, I use another service called Pipe Dream, and, and they call their little units actions. Uh, but just the wealth of what's available out there. Um, I love the idea as a coder of not having the right code, and and Power Automate is just is, is hitting that uh, itch. If, if that makes sense. And one of the things that I also love about Power Automate is also even things like um, Microsoft Power Apps which uh, is a really um, cool, especially like the Canvas apps, which is kind of like taking PowerPoint and Excel and merging them together. If you think that, that makes sense, it, it actually does make sense. Um, it's you know the Canvas-like PowerPoint of being able to drop things into there, but you can easily connect into your uh, connectors uh, like uh, PDF tools, uh, Adobe Sign, and so forth from those apps. And so what I love about it is it takes that same low-code philosophy, you can drop it on a canvas, and then you can trigger those Power Automate flows to um, to then take some of those different actions and uh, and and run them. Uh, so it's it's a it is a really cool way to kind of just rapidly develop uh, some examples uh, uh, in there. Yeah, I also have to say, as someone who's not exactly diligent about commenting my code, um, having the ability to just export my Power Automate flow and hand it over to you, Ben, without any explanation whatsoever, you just look at the steps, is delicious. Um, all right, so we're getting near the end. And and for everybody who's joining us today, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, and if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, drop them in and we will still uh, answer them uh, and we're happy to answer them. But um, I wanted to talk about some of the uh, things that we call cool cuts, which is some of the just cool things that we have found that may be entirely off topic maybe on topic, but um, Joel, I wanted to start off with uh, with you and uh, just talk about one of the ones that uh, that you wanted to share. Uh, sure, let me uh, just bring up um, my screen. This is uh, a code pen that I released, um, uh, I guess a couple of weeks ago, um, but it shows you how to replace the uh, search functionality inside of uh, Embed API. So earlier in the demo, you saw Ray uh, show you how you could search on a, a PDF file that's been OCR. That was the default search engine. Uh, what I've done is actually suppressed the default search. So there's nothing under the little uh, three dot ellipses uh, menu. Um, and uh, instead what I've got up top here is just uh, an HTML uh, div that's got my my search UI in here, and down below is embed API. Uh, matter of fact, let me get that off my screen. You don't need to know who I'm meeting with next. Okay, um, so if I you know leave the word financial in there, you can see we've got it in the in the text. But 
I can go ahead and hit search. And then by interacting with the embed API search API, I know that there were five hits and I can update uh, the little uh, label here, but I can also simply navigate from one of the selections to, the no to another. So I'm in the second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, and hey, guess what happens when I hit the next one? That's right, it cycles through. So um, this is just a really great way to put your own spin on how you want terms to be searched in a particular PDF file. You don't have to stick with what we've provided for you. You can roll your own and we provide you all the APIs to make that work in your embedded view. Back to you, Ben. Awesome, thanks a lot on that. Um, so. Uh, and, and I think that's a really cool example where you could uh, tie that into both um, applications, like productivity applications, as well as even just like your website where you have PDFs, you know, posted on there and make it easy for, for people to find stuff in there. So thanks, Joel. Um, uh, Ray, what do you got? Sure. Uh, I'll be the outlier and not do a tech thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have recently started replaying Horizon Zero Dawn. This is a game that came out a couple years ago for PlayStation. Uh, it is an incredibly well done game. It was just on their, they have a little thing where if you pay for multiplayer, you get games for free every year. So that's why we downloaded it, but it has a DLC and all that. Uh, but if you missed it the first time around, uh, you could absolutely pick it up for a cheaper price. And it is incredibly detailed, one of the best stories I've seen in a video game and just fun as heck to play and robot dinosaurs. Like, do I need to say anything else? <laughs> awesome. All right. So I had something that was not on topic, slightly off topic, um, not as cool as yours, Ray, though. Um, so what I had was... Um, one of the things that we recently um, uh, uh, we announced recently, but also we uh, made available this week, is the ability for you to, um, with partnership with Microsoft, because I was totally in the whole uh, theme of Microsoft and thinking about all the stuff for Power Automate for this episode this week, is that there's a new um, feature inside of Microsoft Teams where you can actually uh, take a, an approval. So if you're chatting with somebody, you can click on uh, uh, click on it to uh, ask for approval, and you can also attach a document to that. I'm gonna just jump ahead here. And when you do that, you can choose eSign, um, and you can use Adobe Sign to be able to take that and route a document for signature. Now you're not having to install an add-in into Microsoft Teams. You're able to just choose that and send that out and track the status in real time inside of Microsoft Teams, which is just really, really cool. What I love about that is um, like Microsoft Teams has kind of been become one of those things where I have it open kind of like Outlook of way back when. It was just that app that I always had open on my uh, computer uh, all the time, which, uh, or on my, now on my phone and everything. So being able to have that at my fingertips is kind of cool. And it's just a great example of another aspect of being able to do um, document automation in the context of uh, where you're working. And um, in some later episodes, we'll probably touch on some of the ways that you can even take some of the Power Automate stuff and even bring some of that into Microsoft Teams. So uh, with that, uh, Joel why don't, uh, and uh, Ray, why don't you jump uh, on, back on. And um, so uh, for everybody who's joined, thank you for, for coming on. Um, I wanted to uh, just also mention, if you like what you saw, also check out some of the things for uh, like the Adobe Tech Blog. Um, on the Adobe Tech Blog, uh, we have a number of different articles. We're constantly uh, writing articles around using our APIs or using Microsoft Power Automate in our APIs and so forth. Um, some of the most recent stuff, uh, Ken, our colleague Ken uh, just uh, walked through one about using a PDF embed API along with Adobe Sign, which is a good one to check out. Um, Ray just uh, made one with uh, with uh, being able to take. Um, Ray, why don't you explain it for, uh, for a second on the article there? 
Yeah, so uh, the document generation API allows you to insert images as well. Uh, it has to be in Base64 format. What I wanted to demo was the ability to use a dynamic image. So I found a charting API that uh, allows you to create a URL, it spits out a image. I wrote code that would hit that uh, based on dynamic data, get the chart back, turn it to Base64, and then include it in our document generation API for a output uh, of a, I think it was number of cats adopted at a shelter or something, but it was tabular data and I was able to add a chart on it as well. Very cool. Uh, and I'm what I'm also excited and maybe challenging on is when we get the document generation uh, uh, add into Power Automate. Maybe we'll uh, play around with uh, seeing if we can also incorporate that into uh, Power Automate uh, flow. Absolutely. All right. And there's also a number of other ones, uh, some formatting tips. For some of the Power Automate ones, uh, if you'd like some of the examples using like PDF protection uh, and so forth, you can uh, check out some of those. Uh, but again, we're always constantly adding uh, more into there. So go check out the Adobe Tech Blog. And if you also like what you saw just in general around uh, Adobe Document Services, go head on over to adobe.io and check out some of the great things uh, in there. And Ryan, uh, thanks. Uh, th th thank you also for joining. I see your uh, message there. And um, uh Happy, happy to have you, and thank you for asking your questions. So with that, thank you, everybody, for coming. Have a wonderful day, and um, have a great one. <laughs> See you next month. Bye.